In a previous video, we talked about how this Seagate's five terabyte drive went out and I opened up the case and replaced the five terabyte drive with a 500 gigabyte drive, which I had laying around. That solved one problem, but it left me with another, which is I still need fairly large storage for my computer. So I went and purchased this $122 enclosure. This is by OWC, Other World Computing. It is an Express 1M2. It is an SSD enclosure. You can get these with the SSD included. I opted not to. My reason for going with the OWC is it's ultra fast, rated at 3151 MBs per second. Compatibility, you can use an SB4, a USB-C, Thunderbolt. It works with PC, Mac, iPad, and Android tablets, and Chromebook. And ultra reliability in that it's basically a slab of metal with some electronics in it. Of course, since I didn't purchase an SSD drive, I needed to pick one up, so I purchased this $283 Western Digital Black it is an SN850X NVMe drive, four terabytes of Gen 4, rated at a max capability of 7,300 MBs per second. Unfortunately, I'm using an older workstation which maxes out at Gen 2. So we'll see what kind of speeds we can get when we hook this up to it. We'll start off with the Western Digital. Since I can't do anything with the enclosure until I have a drive, these come in one, two, four, and eight terabyte configurations. Here it is. Not a whole lot to look at. It's got a key on one side and a place for the fastener to go when it goes into the enclosure. I'm just going to leave this in the case for the moment since. Uh, it's statically protected and you get uh, warranty information five-year warranty on that drive now that we have a drive we move on to the enclosure open up the box protective cardboard protective wrapper for the enclosure it's simple looking just a chunk of aluminum Port up front, little indicator light, uh, no fan. This just uses convection to draw off the heat, which is important because as you're writing or reading to the SSD, it'll throw off heat and that heat needs to go off somewhere. Otherwise, the drive will throttle or it will prematurely fail. Along with our chunk of aluminum, we get USB to USB-C, and it is rated at 40 gigabytes per second, 240 watts. Also inside, we get a Phillips screwdriver and one adhesive foot to attach to the case, and that's it. No instructions are needed and none are included. The first thing we need to do is flip the enclosure over. There are two fasteners that need to be removed before we can open the case. And fortunately, if you don't have any small screwdrivers, one is included. Opening the case is as simple as sliding and lifting up. It's a small slide towards the rear of the case. So don't go big, and I'll tell you why in a moment. The case includes a thermal pad for the SSD card and for the onboard chip, which is something I've not seen on many enclosures. On the bottom portion of the unit, we have a place for the SSD to connect. It takes up to three different sizes that are standard and includes a fastener. 
And then we see here, this is the chip that gets its own thermal pad along with the one that goes for the SSD card. I want to show you how little movement there needs to be to open up this case. You go back on the bottom about two millimeters and then it opens up. You see there are two little contacts right there. And that's all that needs to move out of the way in order for this to lock or unlock. Again, maybe an eighth of an inch. If you try to do something like this and the thermal pad sticks to the SSD, you could potentially damage that. So just be aware that it, it takes very little to open this case. With our two plates set side by side, the connector portion facing towards camera, we need to remove one fastener here so that we can drop in our SSD. Note that the thermal pad for both the SSD and the chip uh, don't need to be peeled. They're just ready to stick on, which is kind of nice. We take our drive. You literally come in, line it up at about 30 degree angle. You push into the contacts. It seats. You hold down the bottom and then attach the fastener that you just took out here. And all you want to do is just snug that fastener. You don't want to make it gorilla tight because you might damage something. And now we're ready to put the case on. Just come over. There's a slight offset and it's just gonna slide and that's it. All we do now is take our two remaining fasteners, put them there, and then we have this little foot here, which is just like this one, except it's gonna go right here. And yes, that means that in the future, should you want to change your drive, you're going to have to take that little pad off to access the fasteners, which is why I said this is not like other enclosures where you can just drop sticks and change them all the time readily. I mean, you can do it, but it's cumbersome. So think of this enclosure as more as semi-permanent to permanent. As before, there's no need to make these really tight. Snug is all you want so that they're below the surface. You pull the label off the pad and voila, that's all it takes to put in a drive into this particular OWC enclosure. The last thing we need to do is plug in the included USB cable. And now I will plug this in to my computer, which has a USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector. With the connection made to the computer, we get a tally light at the front of the OWC. On a Windows computer, we go down to where the start menu would be and right click. You want to go to disk management. That will open up two sub windows. And the first choice you're going to have to make is whether you want this to be a master boot record or a GUID. What you need to know here is that MBR is limited to drives smaller than two terabytes, whereas GPT is modern and it can take drives beyond two terabytes. For our needs, we're picking GPT and we hit OK. Now we're gonna go scroll down until we find our drive when we know it's disk five. And now we need to format that disk. So I right click. We want a simple volume. We hit next. It picks the allocation for us. We're happy with that. At this point, you can assign a drive letter should you wish to do that. Hit next. Our file system is going to be NTFS because we're doing Windows. We're going to go with the default allocation size and I am going to name the volume. I will call mine 
OWC for TB. That should make it really easy to find. We're gonna go with the quick format. If you go with long, it's gonna take an extremely long time and, and there's no need to do that. And now we tell the system to complete the task. And if we look, there is our formatted drive. If we look in our file explorer, there we see OWC for TB. And now we're ready to work with this drive. I will first run a speed test on the 500 gig Seagate's drive. It's a 7200 RPM drive that's in this enclosure, so it's actually faster than the original four terabyte drive that came with the case. We're using a disk speed test by Blackmagic, and as you see, the numbers are gonna be pretty low. At the conclusion of our test, we see a read speed of 106.6 .6 megabits per second and a write speed around 46.5. Now we conduct the very same test for the OWC. The results are in much quicker. We're looking at about 897.4 for write and 791.6 for read. A big jump in speed compared to the Seagate's drive, but nowhere near the capabilities of the enclosure and the Western Digital Drive itself. And just to get a reference, we're going to read and write to the internal SSD on the computer, and we see these numbers are 2374.7 for write and 2432.7 for read, showing us that if we go internally in the computer, we can get a much better speed than we can going through the USB 3 Gen 2. While the Blackmagic program gives us an indication of write and read capability, there's nothing like a real world test of transferring a file. Here we have 28.5 gigabytes. First, we will transfer that over to our USB drive and we're looking at four minutes and 30 seconds. Top speed of about 107 MB per second. Drops down a little bit, but we're still in that zone. Towards the end of the test, we see that we're averaging about 100 MB per second. And do note that the source file is coming from an SSD drive internal to the machine. So the limiting factor here is the USB drive. Now we repeat the same test with the same file, but now we're going to the OWC. We're at 665 MB a seconds, estimated time, 45 seconds to transfer this file. Finally, we go from machine to machine. Both these drives are internal to the computer. Much faster time, because again, we're traveling at the bus speed and the full capability of the system. We're, uh, we're, we're at about over a gig per second. So the outcomes of the speed test aren't all that surprising. We obviously knew that this 7200 RPM drive was just gonna be slow, especially with its USB cable. It's okay if you're looking to save money and store data, it's just gonna take a long time. You certainly can get a lot more throughput with an OWC enclosure using, using a fast Western digital drive. The only way to achieve the highest transfer speeds on this computer is to go from one SSD drive to another mounted on the motherboard. For the fastest transfer speeds to an external drive, we would have to upgrade this motherboard to one that could handle USB 4 speeds. In regards to the OWC, the enclosure stays relatively cool, just slightly above ambient temperature during the read and writes. And if in the future we should upgrade the motherboard on this system, we'll be able to take advantage of even faster speeds. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.